Hello, young scholars. This is Mr. Martyron with your Flip Classroom, an introduction to the major world religions. Now, we've talked about in class the idea of a belief system, and this stems from the fundamental human ability to answer big questions. You know, what's the purpose of life? Why are we here? What is in the afterlife? And as people and communities begin to ask these questions, religions begin to develop. And the whole idea of an organized religion is that members of faith or believers of faith migrate into a single community where they share rituals, they share sacred texts, and they share sacred places that allow members of the community to practice their faith in different locations. These faiths, as we know, will become portable and universal, and they migrate around the world. So we're now going to take a look at the youngest of our Western religions, Islam. Islam was founded by the religious reformer and prophet Muhammad in the year 570 AD. Muhammad was a merchant born in Arabia who began to experience religious visions at the age of 40. Muhammad called his description of his revelations his Quran, or recitation. His followers memorized his words and compiled his teachings in a text after his death. Muslims regard the Quran as the direct word of God to his prophet Muhammad. And when Muslims around the world use translations of the Quran, they do so alongside the original Arabic, the language of Muhammad's revelations. So Muhammad's visions ordered him to preach a message of a single God, which he did in his hometown of Mecca. He gathered followers, but also met resistance. So in 622, he migrated along with his followers to the city of Medina. And an event termed the Hajj that marks the beginning of the Muslim calendar. While in Medina, Muhammad was more successful. He gained converts and formed his first ummah, the word meaning those who obey God's will. This community united followers from different tribes and set religious ties above clan loyalty. That's a big point. Muhammad returned to Mecca at the head of a large army. He soon united with the nomads of the desert and the merchants of the cities into an even larger ummah, of Muslims. By the time Muhammad died in 632, Muslim forces had conquered all of the Arabian Peninsula. Their religion itself had come to be called Islam, which means submission to God. Mecca became its most important holy city. The Islamic community is strong. However, after the death of Muhammad, divisions emerged. Just like we've seen divisions emerge in Christianity and Judaism, there are two different sects of Islam and those differences are called Sunni and Shias. However, the basic tenets of Islam bring Muslims together, and they include the five pillars of faith, which include fasting, giving to charity, giving alms to the poor, praying together as a community, praying five times a day, and making, as long as it's possible, a pilgrimage to Mecca to unite a community of believers. Using the network frames, we see that merchants and teachers carried Islam to West Africa on camel caravans and routes that crossed the Sahara. Ships that crisscrossed the Indian Ocean brought Islam to East Africa and the Swahili coast of Southeast Asia. Marriages between Muslim traders from distant lands and local women were often essential to Islam's growth. People were incredibly attracted to Islam's spiritual and moral teachings, approval of trade, and global connections. Islam also appealed to many rulers for a combination of religious, political, and commercial reasons. The religious practices and ideas of Islam attracted people both inside and outside Muslim states. This was partly because of the straightforward nature of its doctrines. The Quran has only a few central teachings. Allah, the Arabic word for God, is all-powerful and all-knowing. Muhammad, Allah's prophet, preached his word and carried his message. All Muslims have an obligation of jihad, which literally means self-exertion. This means they try to submit to God, spread God's rule, and lead a virtuous life. According to the Muslim Shira law, or sacred law, there are five essential practices that every Muslim should follow. These are known as the five pillars of Islam, or the five pillars of faith. They require every Muslim to declare faith in God and in Muhammad as God's prophet, to regularly pray at home or in mosques, or to fast during the sacred month of Ramadan, to give to the poor, and to make a journey to Mecca if possible. In addition, the Quran forbids alcohol and gambling, as well as certain foods such as pork. 
Quran holds men and women to be fully equal in God's eyes. Both are capable of going to heaven and responsible for carrying out the duties of believers. But the Quran does make clear distinctions between men and women. For example, it sets a daughter's share of inheritance at half that of her sons. However, Muslim law did allow women more rights to property than was common in other law codes at the time. Women played a major role in the early development of Islam. Women originally were expected to remain at home much of the time. They were allowed to pray in public at the mosque, but usually they were separated from men. When people convert to Islam, they often blend their existing religious ideas and rituals. As a result, varied patterns of Islamic practices, rituals, and norms of behavior develop. For example, in Arabia, Persia, and South Asia, women's presence in public was restricted. But in West Africa and Southeast Asia and Central Asia, women often worked, socialized, and traveled independently. This diversity has continued until today. Islam has adapted into many local cultures in many different regions. Today, there are 1.8 billion Muslims connected in our network of belief and community.